Hello everyone, this is probably not what you're expecting, but I owe it to a friend of mine to do this, and I think it'll be easier to do this in the video format, audio format, it's some more, I'm just gonna have a still image of a picture I took, maybe a little something in the background, I'm not sure, I might end up uh, just going in a little bit of gameplay from that I just have on my hard drive of Splatoon or something. I don't know. But anyways, uh, so as the title would suggest, I am going to be reviewing the fancy series of books. Now, I've fully read the first two and the epilogue, and I've skimmed through the glossary, though I was familiar with most of the terms. Uh, as anything added in the book, I read the first one and the second one, so, I mean, the terms were defined there. Okay, so first off, what is the series about? And, well, actually, I guess I should talk about the author first, Sophia Viani, a very dear friend of mine whom, it's actually a funny story, I invited many of my friends uh, to see Infinity Wars the day before I left, and as I'm recording, or the day before I left for Florida, um, as I'm staying with my aunt for the summer, then going to college in the fall. And the day before I left, uh, we were going to see uh, Infinity Wars, which I'm not going to spoil it, but it's quite the movie. So, essentially, uh, here's actually a funny little story. Um, I actually needed... She needed me to buy her ticket online because she couldn't buy it with a credit card, and um, essentially I was like, yeah, no, don't worry, I can do that, and she offered to pay me back, and I was like, no, you don't have to do that. Um, so I, I was waiting for her as she had her ticket. Um, she sends me a text saying, I'm here, and then I asked, uh, where in the theater are you? She said the front. Then I looked around, couldn't find her. Then she sent me a text and said, we're at the wrong theater. Yeah, I just said, oh, okay, don't worry about it, just come down here. And, uh, she was like, yeah, don't don't worry about me, just go ahead and watch the movie and I'll let you know when I get there. And they actually had previews going on for a while, so I was like, hopefully she'll come here on time. Um, I let her know, hey, I have your ticket, remember? And then, uh, I asked her for an ETA, but she didn't know uh, what it meant. Uh, I just said estimated time of arrival. And then uh, she responded with two hours and 45 minutes. At this point, I was terrified because I remembered there was a theater I joked about um, having a show the same day because uh, they didn't have tickets available up front as much as possible. Um, so I thought, crap, did she go to that really far away theater I was joking about? Please no, please no, please no. Then she amended after I asked her which one she had three minutes. And I was like, those are very different. And then she was like, oh, I thought you meant how long the movie was. Uh, and yeah. Then it turned out to be... Then by the time she got here, it was still preview, so everything worked out. But she actually handed me two books. And she had written these a while ago, and I felt so bad when she handed them to me because I kept needing to get around to it, or meaning to get around to reading them, but I never did. So that's sort of my history with the book. Um, I'm going to leave a code to when I actually start talking about the books themselves. But yeah, that's a nice story about uh, um, the author and sort of my relationship with her. And Sneak, because... I can clearly tell that she wrote these books, like, um, I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean that in a good way. So, the main story is sort of about how, uh, with the advancement of technology, people become more active online than offline, on technology as opposed to off, and sort of that's the premise with the book. I do find it a little interesting because, uh, 
they say in June 2007, the iPhone was released to the world. Now, the iPhone was truly a revolutionary product. It really did pull everything together in one. Steve Jobs did a fantastic job on it. What the heck is that? But anyways, um, sorry, got a little distracted. Um, but I, I understand why you'd be a little hesitant to use the term smartphone, because arguably that includes the Blackberry, which was a step up, but it wasn't quite the revolutionary leap that the iPhone was, and that the Android, um, sort of, I kind of want to say leaned off of, but sort of grabbed onto, and yeah, because they're very similar devices. So I, I thought that was kind of an interesting choice. Um, but in terms of sort of where this goes, the main character, Biggie, is a, uh, what's known as an Entoshans. Or, or Entoshan, rather. And a, I, I had a couple of friends say, I say essentially way too much I do. But, trying to avoid it. But what happens is that the Entoshans are those whom don't get so torn into this world, and the uh, Electronoms are the opposite. You know, they're super connected with the online world. Think of them sort of as internet addicts and non-internet addicts, and most of the world is internet addicts in the book. So, this is actually I'm going to start with the first book, uh, let you know when it gets to spoilers, or sort of that. Um, though, as a heads up, I'm considering anything in the first five chapter free game. There are 15 chapters in the book, um, so I'm going to stick with that. I'll let you know when it gets to spoilers, and try and have a timestamp as to when I start talking about the beginning of the second book. But chapter one sort of starts with Biggie. Uh, I think around second grade or so, just sort of dealing with her trouble, and I don't mean to be too critical, but I sort of rolled up my eyes because there's an evil stepmother who just wants her to fight back and against the bullies and just... I, which I'm actually somewhat with her on, I just... Think that she goes too far in the other direction. Like, if someone's beating you up, do learn to protect yourself. That's the way I see it. Like, I'm not just gonna take a punch, I'm going to learn to punch back. Then I'll die. <laughs> um, but yeah, and also she wants her to turn into an electronom. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering the term. And sort of were introduced to their relationship very early on. Then uh, we're introduced to Biggie's father, whom is a producer of... I can't remember, was it robotics or robotic... Uh, no, he made robots and Biggie programmed a specific code so she could have a friend for it. So uh, AI, which, which is really cool, you know? I mean, it's not exactly unheard of, but it still is a neat story. And, I think it's used moderately well uh, throughout the book. Then as time goes on, we realize uh, Biggie's father is killed. And this is actually a really nice time skip. Well, I'm not sure if you'd call it a time skip or more that the first three chapters were, were flashbacks. But Biggie... Uh, chapter 4 starts 16 years later. Biggie woke up from a horrible nightmare. Um, and of course it was her father's murder. Which is very tragic. And I can't remember which book in the series, but I remember specifically, um, later reading, I don't remember much about my father. I'm just like, well, or much about my childhood other than my father being murdered. I'm like, well, no. You know, she did remember some of it. Chapters 1 through 3 were about that, and well, the third one was the only one really focusing on the murder. So, well, this is like continuity, but what are you gonna do? Um, he woke up from the nightmare. 
and essentially she's still dealing with her uh, loss of a father and her mother is not very kind and this is sort of something I don't get. It, it seemed like a really strange writing decision because Biggie really didn't like her mother so much so that she made a bond. And Biggie's stepmother didn't believe that first. And uh, she activates it and jumps out the window uh, after her mother runs and is just like, oh shoot, what, what if she's serious? And she just blows up the house. Which, that's a pretty powerful bomb if it can destroy an entire building, like even if it's a smaller house. To completely destroy it? Or maybe it wasn't completely destroyed. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I love this sentence. Uh, or not this sentence, but sort of at the end of the chapter, it's like, She jumped out the window and landed on the wall, dividing her house from the beach just as her house behind her exploded. She jumped off the wall and ran toward the beach. You know, it's sort of the generic action. Walk away slowly. Alright. Then chapter 5 is... Uh, I guess I should give my spoiler warning. Um, and I won't cover the entire book, just sort of the main points of it. Or things I thought int were interesting, things I liked, things I didn't like. All that good stuff. So, apparently in... This book, we're unfortunately still dealing with Iran. <laughs> uh, the US and Iran, but essentially they're using robots, and one of the robots actually had uh, Biggie's program in it, and so uh, it became Biggie's friend, and she named it after her father, Nexi. And so the book is essentially about their adventures together and where it goes. I. I think the climax is, I'd say the first book suffers from being too predictable. That's the main thing I'd say about it. Um, some things aren't explored as well as they could have been, um, some things aren't interesting. It's still an entertaining uh, story that I can recommend if you just want to check it out. It's not a long book, it's um, how many pages, like 90, 92 pages, however, it's double spaced and uh, larger font, not the largest in the world, so you should be able to get it through. I actually read through the book uh, while I was waiting for my flight. Now the second book uh, I thought was a lot better. So essentially the first book, or the first book sort of focused as an introductory, the second book sort of acts as a expansion, as any sequel should, and I think it does a really good job at that, um, for the most part. I have my critiques of it too. So essentially the book starts off where they're in Robot Fight Club, and yes, there are a lot more pop culture references in this, and this is how I sort of, you can see sort of the author in it, like all the Deadpool references, I'm just like, yeah, Sophia loves Deadpool. Um, so, uh, Nexi is fighting a robot and earning money, and, uh, she's just like, hey, why don't you get a job? And he's just like, I didn't go to college, and, um, 98% of the people who just graduate from high school don't have a kid out of wedlock and can get a job aren't permanently poor in the United States, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a good job, it just has to be a job. Like, 98% of them make it at make it into the middle class, so I, I think that's a weak argument, especially because as time goes on, supply, you know, technology will get better creating more supply, which just lowers prices, that's basic economics. Um, unless, of course, things really do turn into crap and it really is the apocalypse due to, insert politician here, um, enacting insert policy here, that ends the world. But essentially the book sort of follows 
uh, another person named Laggy, whom we later find out is, uh, I don't want to spoil it, um, has something to do with the main protagonist, let's say that, Biggie, and Laggy, uh, suffers from lagitis, and yes, it is meant, uh, as a joke, uh, where she's too hesitant to do anything, not trusting enough in your instincts, which I I actually really related to this point, because when I was sort of training to get to where I am in Splatoon 2, I suffered a lot from indecision, where I was like, do I want to throw that bomb? Do I want to go down there? Um, where you kind of just have to act, and learning, I guess less learning to trust my instincts, but more to form them so that my instincts are telling me to do what I want them to, so sort of getting into the habit of uh, shooting up at Swashhounds, at least until they buffed it. Um, you know, that sort of thing was something I needed to practice doing. And, uh, yeah, overall, just a lot more pop culture references. I want to talk less about uh, the second book because it really is that much better, and the first one I'd sort of recommend as sort of laid back, and if you're into robotics and um, adventure novels, I'd actually recommend these to younger children, like 10, 11. Not because of their poorer quality, it just seems that that's more of the target audience for this. Um, but for the second one, I, I can actually recommend this one to pretty much anyone who's just looking for a decent novel to kill the time. Uh, <laughs> I'm skimming through it and I'm seeing a couple more of the references. But you do get more explanation on the person who killed Biggie's father and, you know, things like that. But anyways, uh, I think that's... This is just about does it. I know I didn't talk about the second book nearly as much, but I do recommend uh, you read it for yourself. The names of the books are Fancy by Sofia Viani and Fancy 2. They are available on Amazon uh, in physical and uh, digital. Um, highly recommend the second. I can recommend the first, um, though I'm not going to say it's exactly the best book in the world, but I mean, you know what they say, it's much easier to critique than to, uh, make. And, uh, I should have, uh, regular uploads coming back soon, though streaming's pretty much off the table with the internet connection I have here, like, as I was doing this, I was downloading an update to Overwatch, which isn't even done yet. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble about these books for 26 minutes, pretty much unedited. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.